unusual and hopefully quite interesting video for you today. And before I begin, I probably should mention that I worked on all kinds of rifles and the firearm you're going to see in a moment um, could be beyond repair. I don't think it is. And you'll understand what I'm talking about in a moment. And at the end of the video, I'll give you my conclusion based on what I hope to share with you as we look at this very unique firearm and situation. And I should add before I begin that years ago, shortly after I finished university, I came across guns just because people knew that I liked guns and the guns that were introduced to me had been buried in Eastern Europe or Germany or wherever. I never really found out. Some were from Poland. And they, the people knew that I could get them working without charging thousands of dollars to make them perfect. That wasn't my objective because they were quite rusty from having been buried. And some of them were in greasy linen and some of them were in plastic bags. And this is what happens when people uh, lose the right to have firearms. So they were buried and then they were retrieved from the ground. And then presumably the original owner wasn't around anymore. So I had a very unique experience. I didn't expect to be able to make a video like this because I thought those days were over. And then this gun presented itself. So um, here's here's the gun. It's it's an exceptional, uh, what is in German, Bach Buchs Flint. I hope I'm pronouncing, pronouncing that correctly. And as you can see, um, this, this gun has been through some hard times and I received it, I, I heard about it, and uh, once again, uh, people knew that I could do something, so, uh, but it's my property. I decided to buy this, and um, you'll see how interesting it is. So what do we have here? The rifle barrel on the bottom is 9.3 by 74R. Most of you wanna know that, and uh, sometimes I forget to say what it is, and the upper barrel is a 12 gauge. This is an extremely, capable cartridge, the 9.3 by 74R. And not to distract you, but here are the ballistics because many people ask me the ballistics of these cartridges. So you can see the foot pounds of energy and you can see the European version. And somebody's gonna ask me what kind of cartridges these are. So Dynamet Nobel, RWS from Germany. Uh, they're not cheap, but sometimes um, you have to buy from RWS because nobody else makes them. And a lot of people say it's one of the best, if not the best manufacturers. Anyway, so that's the story on the ammunition. And then getting back to the, to the gun. So uh, you usually ask me, you know, what are my thought processes? And so it arrived, I forget whether it was in this condition or whether it was disassembled. But right away, I could see that this is an exceptional firearm. And I've owned Krieghoff or Krieghoff um, tech firearms before. I never had one in 9.3 by 74R. But you can see that at one point when it came out of the factory, this was an extraordinary and expensive firearm. It even has the cross bolt, kind of a modified greener cross bolt. And so, um, you know, what to do. So this stock was was rigidly affixed to the wood. It was stuck to the wood. Uh, sorry, it was stuck to the action. And so I, I f sort of struggled with it. And then you can see what I had to do here. I tried to get the screws out of this butt plate, but it, it, this was a resisting arrest. So I you know, managed to do some, get it out. And then in here is a through bolt. So that also was fighting me. So I poured um, ballistol or ballistol into that and let it sit upside down overnight that loosened that screw. And it still was not easy, but I got it out. And then I was able to remove the stock and now it comes off easily. And if you ever encounter something like this, you have to think like an archeologist, like save every little piece because maybe you can find a factory stock I don't think so. And it won't be economically sensible to get a new stock made. That'll be thousands of dollars. You can see even 
the screws from the original grip capper here and there would have been a horn trigger guard here and I'm assuming that this um, was exposed to fire and it, it has some kind of erosion maybe somebody bead blasted it there's some old duct tape here of some kind these things are all immaterial when you buy something like this you're mainly concerned about in 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 my mind when this arrived I thought that I had there would be no coil springs because there's a chance that this was exposed to fire possibly flooding sometimes they go together fire and flooding uh, the fire first of course and uh, this didn't look like this when it, I removed this stock uh, this was not badly corroded because you would see pitting if it was badly corroded but this had a halo of rust which I was able to remove with a Dremel and um, a wire brush so that turned out okay now these are the hammers and you can see both sides the hammers are intact the coil springs are frankly magnificent this is a beautiful coil spring the the safety moved properly no problem with the safety the top lever was very stiff I had to use again lubricant in here to get this to move but I did and the cross bolts are still extremely stiff but I could get the action to close just like that now I have no leverage because I have no forend so um, even in this condition and I tap this over uh, I, I had more lubricant on this I may have used an electric heat gun to get the oil in there a little better anyway I tapped this over until I was confident it was locked because before beginning to work on something after you know that the the metal is okay and I had the metal checked for Rockwell hardness I looked for other signs of damage from heat and I couldn't see any evidence of catastrophic damage. But like I said, you have to think like kind of a archaeologist. So I took the action and I used a reduced load, which I'm sure most of you would know how to do. And with the reduced load, fired the gun. So this would be the safety here. And you can see that was one and two. Maybe we didn't pick that up. I'll try to cock this thing again so you'll see. Now again I have no, you can watch the hammers come back. So it it's perfect. And then we slam shut and safety and oh, one and, and two. So um, when I knew that the firing pins were good and it could take low pressure and it could take a normal pressure shotgun shell I'm pretty confident this can be restored so this is a huge project and I have a lot of young guys on the channel that are trying all kinds of things and bravo to you this would be um, something that I don't expect uh, will, will take a short period of time for me now other damage that was done there used to be uh, provision for mounting a scope presumably claw mounts you can google Kriegholf tech and you'll see what this looks like these are fourteen, fifteen thousand dollar guns. I could be exaggerating, but this is a lot of engraving on this one. Um, all the parts are just perfectly made. Now, the slip, the swivel here, that just slides off. So that was not that way, obviously, from the factory. What's missing entirely is the bead or the front sight. Um, at the end here is another component that looks something like this, but it embraces both barrels and I'll probably have to go to a machinist um, to get that made. I don't care whether there are side plates on the barrels. Uh, there, are, there are guns that don't have them. There are guns that have them. I don't see any evidence of solder. And you see when you're working on something like this, you look for marks like this. We probably can't pick this up on camera, but this mark here is a clue to where this part goes. So I would mark that more carefully and maybe this needs to be silver soldered. Although lately I get away with a lot with epoxy. It's surprising. And you can see that this part here is quite similar 
I mean, not really, but it, the idea is here, and I don't believe there were side plates. That was the original thought. Now the fore-end hanger here, it comes off perfectly. So, and you can see the condition inside is exceptional. Um, the action looked a bit like that when I first took it apart. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And then the other side is beautiful. Even this is engraved. And you'll notice that the engraving, unlike the guns from Poland and the Eastern Bloc countries that I worked on that I mentioned earlier, they always were kind of eroded and corroded. There was pitting. This Kriegov doesn't have that. It's quite unique. So I don't know what happened to this unfortunate gun, but it can be restored. And essentially, all we need is a new metal finish of some kind. And you could cheat and just go with a powder coating of some kind, although you don't want to fill the engraving. Uh, do I care about the top rib? I don't know. You can feel the silver solder. You can see the remains of it here where my hand is. That's uh, silver solder and a tiny little, some evidence of the, the, the rib. Anyhow, these things I'll have to think about. And I, I kind of rushed to, I was eager to share this with you, as you can imagine. You got a, some caulking indicators here. These pop up when it's loaded. There's another one hidden under the top lever. And this top lever obviously has to be freed up. So that'll take some doing. And to remove the barrels um, should be quite simple. I did it before filming. And again, you can see the condition. If these parts were dead, nothing would move. The springs are good, both sides. Everything works the way it should. The bores um, are shocking. They look brand new. The, I don't know, like I said, I know nothing. Well, generally, but about this gun, um, the history is a mystery. And the stock, this is going to be tough. This is a complex stock to make. The inletting, to get these surfaces correct, that's going to be tricky. Um, so once again, all kinds of questions usually come in after a video like this. So what do I do? Well, I try to find the simplest route to accomplishing my objective, which is how I live. And I put the word out that I need a buttstock for a Kriegholf Tech, and I'll wait maybe six months. Maybe somebody has something. You just never know. There are so many things going on out there. That would be great good fortune. But even if I get one, it's probably not going to fit exactly. So you're kind of trapped. Getting a new one made will be thousands because you don't want to use a lousy piece of wood and invest all that labor in it. So what do I do? I kind of compromise and I put out the word and these stocks showed up. And what I'll probably do, I haven't concluded this, but uh, this is from a Parazzi actually, beautifully made stock. There's some kind of damage on it, uh, the owner said. But I don't know, I can't find the damage. Obviously this trap style uh, recoil pad will have to go. And what you do, again, for the younger gunsmiths out there, uh, and this is not conventional gunsmithing. This is not gunsmithing that you would do for a living because it's gonna take me hours. I do it because I enjoy working on guns and I look forward to getting this particular gun working again. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll slowly, you'll see the top tang here, I'll slowly work on this and get this to fit in there. Now I have to obviously cut this off and reshape and it's, it's painstaking work but eventually you end up with something by setting it back generally because you may have to get more or less wood in here. And in the end, it's never perfect. I usually have to use some kind of epoxy filler, but I'm confident I can get a buttstock. Um, when I put the word out, have a look at this, I'm always amazed. Uh, the guy said, well, maybe this will help. Now this won't help this project, but this is, he said he's got a vomit buttstock and forend. Uh, you, you may be familiar. You remember when Savage was uh, distributing the, the Volmet guns, that looks like that pattern. 
maybe they're in Europe too, I don't know, the European viewers will know. But uh, I, I didn't see a single mark on this. It came in a box. This must be, I don't know, from the 60s or something. But it's just flawless. So obviously I won't use that for this project, but it's kind of neat owning that. Uh, the barrels, yeah, I mean, something has to happen here. These, this has to be held and then something has to happen here. Now fortunately it's not a double rifle. If it was a double rifle there would be the questioning, a question of regulating it but I don't have to do that. I only have to get the rifle barrel to be on at a certain distance which I'll have to figure out. Generally speaking and again I'm reflecting on those guns that came out of the earth. Um, I I think they are mostly right on when you leave them alone. They, they don't fiddle and don't bend. So I'll try to secure them where they are, take a few shots and, you know, I'll, it'll teach me what to do. Um, what does it say on it? Bowler or Burler, Spezial, Stahl, so special steel, some serial numbers, some proof house marks, 9.3 by 74R, Somewhere on here it probably says 1270. Anyway, quite a unique piece. And I said I would um, mention the conclusion and I think you probably already know it. I think that this can be restored into an exceptional Bach Boost Flint once again. It, it, can, it can work. It, it, and, and it can actually be not bad to look at. This, this looks very questionable, um, but it, it actually, it's, it's a viable project. And when you pick up something like this for whatever it was, $200, you really can't leave it behind if you're interested in guns as I am. And I was very happy to see that the springs, because I, I did once or twice have to get new springs for those rusted guns and it's a pain and fitting flat springs so, so that the, you can imagine uh, this I this is actually ready to go it's more or less frankly cosmetic except for this part at the muzzle so there it is um, like I said a very interesting project very different thing to come across and I'm sure I'll look at this pieces are falling off as I speak um, I'm sure under here is beautiful grain wood but it's all useless now. This might have even been covered in leather at one point. But that's what happens with guns. So I hope you find that interesting. Uh, please send any questions or comments and we'll see you all on the next video. Uh, if you can help the channel on Patreon, that makes a big difference. Um, takes a lot to put these together. And I hope you're all healthy and happy out there and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.